When you do things God's way, it's more successful. And when you reject God's standards, you're going to have trouble in life. And we can point to American history as, as prime examples. Over the years, God has allowed our family to acquire what, what now is believed to be the largest private collection of original documents from the founding era. We have actual letters and journals from George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and John Adams and Benjamin Franklin, so many cool things. And what we do is we use those original sources to do research and go back and see what, what was really the, the goal of America. Well, when people talk about the American experiment, what did it mean? And in the midst of it now in culture, of course, with some of the accusations coming from the 1619 Project or coming uh, with the, the critical race theory ideology, there's a lot of lies being said about America. We're able to go back with original sources and say, actually, here's what actually happened in Jamestown. Here's what actually happened in Plymouth. Here's, here's what actually happened through American history or the founding fathers. And, and the vast majority of them came out against slavery, against the institution, certainly against the slave trade early on. And then many of them come out against slavery as individuals and free their slaves and start abolition societies. And we're able to document all of this in the original records that God's allowed us to collect over the years. And part of our goal and initiative is to show people, ultimately, as Christians, that when you do things God's way, it's more successful. And when you reject God's standards, you're going to have trouble in life. And we can point to American history as, as prime examples. We can point to early presidents, that when they follow the biblical guidelines laid out, the principles of godliness and righteousness, they, they're they're an, an entire campaign, right? Their, their presidency, they just did better. And when people rejected those principles, now, by the way, that includes some of those constitutional principles, because so much of the foundation of our political philosophy was built on biblical principles, which again, we can document and show. And as I'm saying all this, we have so much information available on our Wall Builders website, wallbuilders.com, uh, because we would encourage everybody listening as, as we make some of these statements today, and especially about the Christian heritage of our nation or the founding fathers, to, to not take our word for it. In fact, don't take anybody's word for it. Go do your own research. We have have seen a nation in chaos because we've just been trusting the wrong people for way too long without doing actual research ourselves. And certainly, I think everybody listening to this podcast can appreciate and understand that as we have seen prime examples, even during the COVID pandemic, when we were told so many things that actually many of them turned out a year and a half later that everybody now knows that, hey, some of those things we were told to do were not maybe the most medically sound advice. Maybe right. maybe we should have been questioning some science along the way. But the point is that we have a prime example of saying, instead of just trusting whatever somebody says, maybe we should do some research and see what's there, see what's true. And that's what we try to do with American history is show people a little bit more of the truth of our nation, of our heritage, where we came from. And we use original sources to do that. Yeah, I love that you do that because it's not just here's what Tim thinks and here's what David Barton thinks. It's like here are the actual documents showing that this is what our country was founded on. So I want to park there for a minute when it comes to education. And you talked about, you know, the, the resources that you have talk about what the goals were of our nation. When you look at education, what was the goal of education when America was, you know, really being established as a nation? What were these parents thinking? What were, what were, you know, what direction did they want to go with their kids? I, I'm sitting in a corner of our museum right now as we're having this conversation. Behind me is part of our education section. And, and, and these are uh, desks behind me from an, an original one-room schoolhouse back in the 1800s. Uh, it's so many resources from early American education. We have things going all the way back to the very beginning of education in America. And, and that really does go back largely to the Pilgrims when certainly Jamestown founded in 1607 and then Plymouth is not till 1620. But Jamestown, they, they didn't start off with early education. That wasn't part of their goal and initiative. They, they had some different ideas in Jamestown. When the Pilgrims came, they were coming looking for religious liberty, looking for freedom for themselves. And for those right. that remember the Pilgrim story, they had gone to Holland, uh, they were raising their kids in Holland, and, and they had some freedom there, but not as much freedom as they had hoped initially. And then they saw their kids begin to embrace some of the, the ways of some of the other individuals in Europe and Holland. And they said, that's not how we want our kids to, to grow up. They said, we, we want a different place. We can have the full freedom we want, and we can raise our kids in the fear and admonition of the Lord. So they come to America. The reason all this context matters is the very first education law passed in America was passed in 1647. It was passed up in those early New England colonies. 
and, and it was printed in 1650. It was a book called The Code of the 1650s. I actually have that book behind me. I can get it in a minute if we need to. But in this book, it has the very first education law. The law became known as the Old Deluder Satan Act. This is something that people listening, you can look this up later. Uh, you can go read that original law. The reason the law became known as the Old Deluder Satan Act is the law starts off explaining it is the one chief project of that old deluder Satan to keep men from the knowledge of scriptures as in former times. And the law goes on for several pages, but it starts with the premise that the devil's main objective is to keep us, to keep our kids from knowing the knowledge of the word of God. And, and the point they make in the law is if our kids can never read, they're never going to know what the Bible says. And, and, and then they won't be able to, to live godly, to enact righteous policies, to elect godly leaders. We have to make sure they can read so they know what the Bible says so they can live these godly lives. That was the beginning of the very first education law in America, and, and this is what birthed schools. And, and you can go forward uh, with that notion, that thought of education in, in 1690 is when you have the first textbook that was printed in English in America. It was the New England Primer. And in the New England Primer, it was first printed in 1690. They were used in public schools all the way through the early 1900s. This was the primary text that people, students used when they started school. So this was kind of like the first grade textbook. Well, in it, the, the whole thing is religious content, the, the alphabet. The first alphabet's a picture alphabet, but the pictures are, are Bible stories. And, and then the alphabet will have A, and then on the side it'll have a, a picture, and then in, in Adam's fall, we send all. And the whole thing are just Bible illustrations. You then come to an alphabet of lessons for youth, and, and they're all Bible verses. It starts off, uh, A, a wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. B, better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. On it goes A through Z, they're all Bible verses. The, the whole thing is religious content. And if someone just picked it up today, they might go, why are they including so much Bible in this first <laughs> grade textbook? And the reason we'd ask that question is because we, we didn't understand why they were doing education in the first place. The reason they started education in America in the first place was to make sure their kids had the knowledge of the Word of God. So as they're even teaching them to read, teaching them the alphabet, they're working to accomplish their purpose of helping their kids learn the knowledge of the Word of God. And, and this was public school, because back then there, there weren't these private schools that we see today, and, and, and even the notion of homeschool. Certainly a lot of kids learned at home. But I want to point out, this was this is general public education. Everybody in early America was learning the foundation of Christianity because that was the whole point of education, was to make sure kids knew the knowledge of the Word of God, that that was the foundation upon which everything in American education was built. Homeschool Insights is sponsored by CTC Math. If you're looking for a great online math program, visit ctcmath.com and try it for free. For more great homeschool inspiration and resources, listen to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. 